It's nice to be here. It's nice to be here. I could be doing worse shit, man. Seriously. I could be working for my family business. I don't want to do that. My family business, we actually own a funeral home. Yeah. We own a funeral home in the ghetto, one of the top 10 violent crime cities in North Carolina. So business is good. <laughs> Seriously, if any of y'all heard gunshots growing up, you might have got nervous. When we heard gunshots growing up, it's going to be a good Christmas. <laughs> it's just like, rah, rah, that's a PlayStation, son, okay. Pow, pow, and an extra controller, okay. It's going to be a good Christmas. So I'm in therapy for that shit. <laughs> I recently started going to therapy the uh, past couple weeks, and uh, it's a big deal. It's a big deal for a black person to go to therapy. We generally don't do that. You tell a black person you're going to therapy, they'll get confused. Seriously, like, yo, bro, we going out on Friday. You trying to roll? Nah, I got to go to therapy. Which club is that? What's their dress code? What's their shoe policy? It's like, no, bro, I'm going to therapy. I'm going to talk about issues that I have with my father. This nigga over here bragging about having a daddy. <laughs> She's like, I went to therapy because I need to get to the bottom of the issues that I have with my parents' divorce. Uh, I don't know why people still keep getting married. Is anybody married here? Yeah. <laughs> See how sad that shit sounds? <laughs> Whoo! Eternity. Forever. <laughs> divorce rates, they're just too high. I can tell divorce rates are high because uh, stepmom and stepdad porn seems to be so popular. Like, <laughs> it is the number one thing people are jacking off to. People cannot just stop touching themselves to these broken homes. <laughs> All, I can't believe step-parent porn. It's so unbelievable. All the storylines are the same. It's always like the stepdad's hooking up with the daughter. The mom busts in like, that's not how you suck a dick. This is how you suck a dick. It's just like, <laughs> just like, what do you know, Bethany? Like, if you knew how to suck a dick, you wouldn't be demonstrating it on your third marriage now. <laughs> Scoot over and let Ashley become her own woman. <laughs> I do have an okay relationship with my dad, though, which is an odd segue. Um, <laughs> My dad uh, came and visited me recently. It was real nice, and we were out and about in the town, and uh, we had to go home, and we were on the subway uh, platform waiting for the train to come. And while we're on the subway platform, there were these two kids down the way playing the penis game. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if y'all know what that is. Penis game is when one person says the word penis, another person says it a little louder. Penis, penis, penis. You just keep going back and forth till one of you bitch out. Yeah. It warmed my heart to see those kids play that game. You know, because kids are always on their cell phones nowadays. I'm like, oh, they're connecting. This is nice. It's humanity. They're sharing a bond. You know, because I'm from the South. Like, that's what we did. We played the penis game because we weren't reading. So, uh, <laughs> but ever since moving to New York, I realized uh, if somebody's outside yelling the word penis, there's a penis. <laughs> like, it's not really a game, yo. It's just like, yo, penis, penis. <laughs> You ain't have to call me out or nothing. Do I win? <laughs> no, I am from the South. I am from the South. And uh, being from the South, uh, I have a lot of white friends back home. And uh, I'm their one black friend. Yeah. I'm their draft pick. Mm -hmm. First round, you know? When that happens, when you're the one black friend, you become the ambassador for all things black. Anything swirling around in their mind, they're like, send it on high to Jordan. Let him consult with the Negro Council. <laughs> Have him bring word back down the mountain. <laughs> and we shall ruminate upon it here in Caucasia. <laughs> Buddy of mine, his name is Steven. He texted me the other day. He goes, uh, race question here. <laughs> yeah, that's how he opened it, you know? Like it was Jeopardy, just do, do, do. I'll take race for 400, Alex. He goes, uh, race question here. Do black people get ticks? <laughs> yeah. So Lexi says someone at work told her that black people don't get ticks because of the type of shampoo that they use. <laughs> I was like, nah, bruh, black people don't get ticks because we stay the fuck up out the wilderness. Like, there's no <laughs> mystery to this shit. Like, what kind of question is that? I vote that for every dumb question a white person asks a black person, we get to delete one episode of Friends from history. <laughs> right? That's a fair trade, right? Anytime you're just like, what's your hair feel like? It's like, mm, I don't know if you're gonna figure out if Rachel got off that plane, dog. I'm sorry, I gotta, gotta one more time to sing Smelly Cat, motherfucker. 
Uh, I feel like I, I honestly feel like an outsider in uh, my friends groups a lot of times because I am the one black friend. They've done a lot of things that I haven't done. You know, they they travel the world. They've had children. They've done drugs. I've never done drugs. I've never done it in my life. I had a roommate who was gay. I'm assuming he's still gay. Uh, but he uh, he found out I had never done drugs. He tried to get me a do him. He's like, you should try some drugs, man. I was like, no, that's not really my thing. He's like, try some drugs. I was like, I'm not into that. He goes, you should try cocaine. Nigga. <laughs> I don't think you heard me. I said I never done drugs. You don't tell somebody that doesn't have a driver's license to try drag racing. You know? He started hitting me with all this logic. Do a little cocaine, a little bump on the weekend, a little toot toot cocaine. I was like, man, I never done cocaine. He goes, cocaine don't even do anything. He said, cocaine just make you feel like Beyonce. It's like, you're a horrible fucking salesman. It's like, I'm a straight man. I don't want to feel like Beyonce. That may be your idol, it's not mine. I hit him back, I was like, you should try pussy. <laughs> he was like, I never had pussy before in my life. I was like, man, pussy don't even do anything. Pussy just make you feel like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> do you smell what I'm cooking? <laughs> I just don't need another addiction. I don't need to do no drugs, man. I already got my cell phone. I'm addicted to that shit enough. You know, I already have all the social media and stuff. My dad recently got an iPhone and uh, he just signed up for Instagram. I'm the only person he follows. <laughs> yeah, it's just me and him. Sometimes he hit me up. He's like, did you see on Instagram the other day? I'm like, yeah, it was me. Like whatever you saw, I made you see that shit. <laughs> he doesn't know how to work the app at all. Like the other day I posted a photo on Instagram. He screenshotted it, texted it to me and said, I like this, nigga. <laughs> That's not how this works, bro. <laughs> I wrote him an email, printed it out, mailed it to him, fire emojis. <laughs> I, just, I just can't do the social media too much, man. I just get addicted to it. Like, I'll have to, like, delete my apps every now and again. Like, but not in a self-righteous way. You ever have somebody take the time to make an announcement that they're deleting Facebook? Like, you give a shit? Like they write out a whole post like a Civil War veteran, just, my dearest Facebookers, just writing you to let you know I'm deactivating my account for a while. It's been a cold winter and we've unfriended a lot of good people. If you'd like to reach me, you can send text message or carrier pigeon, or you could just leave, Brian. Like, nobody knew you were here. We all thought you died in a gluten accident like four months ago. I never wish you a happy birthday. Every year I see your name in the top right hand corner. I say, nope. It's too much, man. Like, cause I'm at the age too where all my uh, social media is changing because all my friends are having kids, you know? So my Instagram has just become this endless scroll of a father's wallet. You know, just people all the time. Look at my baby. Look at her. He's a cute, he's a cute baby trying to walk. He can't walk. He got little ass legs, big ass head. What do you think he do? <laughs> people post so many pictures of their children. I don't even know how we have Amber Alerts anymore. I'm serious. You get these alerts on your phone. Have you seen this child? Have I fucking seen it? Every day. I'm glad it's gone. <laughs> now I can get back to pictures of booties and memes the way the good Lord intended. That's what the fuck I signed up for. I wanna see your ugly ass baby. <laughs> it's just too much. Social media is just too much. Like I, I just don't want my dad to get addicted to this shit. I, I can't take it because Instagram, we're all liars on there. That's the problem. Everybody's lying on there. They're living a fake life. People post pictures all the time. Just like, I'm always on vacation. All the food I eat is delicious. And I take smooth shits. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that people lie about the most on there is their occupation. I see it all the time. People list on their occupation. Public figure. What? I'm a public figure. What do you do? You know, I be in the public. <laughs> Figuring. <laughs> we don't have real public figures anymore. Like Gandhi, that was a public figure. Martin Luther King, public figure. Mother Teresa, public figure. Millennials, we're so caught up in followers, I don't even think we'd be impressed if Jesus came back. <laughs> we wouldn't. Old people would be losing their mind. They'd be like, oh my God, that's Jesus Christ right there. That's the man himself, JC Jesus Christ, and his 12 followers. We'd be like, ugh, 12 followers. God damn, Jesus, what you... She got an Android, motherfucker? I thought you was God's son. It's like, ugh, keep your bread. I don't want your bread. I'll get my blessings elsewhere. <laughs> Jesus would come back. He'd feel that pressure, man. He'd have to get his numbers up. You know, he'd be out here on Instagram posting thirst traps. 
with his abs out. <laughs> little throwback Thursday. Oh, hashtag bliss. <laughs> <laughs> He'd feel that pressure, man. He'd have to do something irrational. Jesus would have to join the Kardashians. <laughs> he would. You know they try to fuck him since he's black. And uh, <laughs> I'll let y'all catch up on that. <laughs> but they're the Kardashians. They're a brand. They can't just let any old scrub into their clan. They quiz Jesus. They'd be like, what do you bring to the table, Jesus? What do you bring to the Kardashian brand, Jesus? It's like, what do I bring to the table? It's like, I'm a best-selling author. It's like, I turn water into wine. They be like, water into wine? Bitch, we turn Bruce into Caitlyn. Step your game up, boo-boo. 